the house of the Lord. God is good, is he not? His mercies, his, his awesomeness, his grace that he extends toward us daily is unbelievable and unmeasurable. The love that he extends toward us. How great is our God. We don't have words to describe him, but he is good. He is good today. We can be Let's just come in just a second, and she's going to be singing a song. 
don't like the word full. <laughs> I have a problem with keeping a full tank of gas. Uh, my dad's always saying, do you have enough gas? Right before I leave, that's what he's always saying, do you have gas? When I even arrive, do you have any gas? You know, because, and there's reasons that he says that. I've ran out several times. And I think the last time I ran out, my sheriff in my county came by in the nicest fellow, and he just helped me and helped me, waited on me because my husband wouldn't answer my phone call. But anyway, because he's used to me calling saying, I'm out of gas. So not only, Tim, I, I, I've learned now, hey, I'll wait till he's with me, then he can fill me up, you know, go fill, fill it up. And so, um, but... I'd rather have a full tank of gas. I like a full stomach too. I don't know about y'all, but I love to eat. I also, I like a full bank account. How about y'all? Y'all like a full bank account? I like a full life. A life of abundance. I'm going to tell you something. I may not always have a full tank of gas. I might not always have a full bank account. I might not always have a full stomach. But the one thing I just want to always be full of is Jesus Christ. Because when Doesn't mean he's going to give you all those things. We're going to be singing a song in a minute and it talks about is he enough. I say he's enough today. I mean, are we there? Are we there when we say he went to the cross and that is enough? That's enough for me today, Jesus. So the song to one that's going to be coming and ministering to us today is called Fill Me Up. In Psalm 103, verse 5, he fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. In Psalm 107, verse 9, whether actual hunger and thirst, I'm sorry, for he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with what? With good things. What is the good things? It's not things, okay? He fills my life with his presence. Everywhere we go, if we can just... Feel his presence. And then he has the good things too. Amen. We have a life. We live a life that is full in Christ. There are going to be difficult days and there's going to be problems and troubles. And uh, But I'm going to tell you, if we just cling to him, he makes it all the difference. He does. Fill us up today, God, with your presence. Fill me up, Jesus.
of things. And we are thrilled and delighted to have the Miller family with us. And uh, Brother Harold has preached here a number of times, does an awesome job, has been a long-term pastor of Honeycomb Church of God. And of course, he's here to honor the Lord, but if you want to know the real truth, he's about two years old back there, a grandson. And, <laughs> And he's almost, it's all, about his birthday, I believe, they came to celebrate that, and we're so glad they did. And God bless you for being here. And Brother Miller, will you come at this time? And we're just thrilled to have, to have you with us. We thank you for your ministry, the long-term pastor, doing an amazing job at Honeycomb after all these years, and uh, looking forward to the work of God today. Would, would you make Brother Harold welcome to you? If I make it until the 23rd of next month, I will have pastored my church for 48 years. So thank God. What a journey. What a journey. What a great and a powerful journey God has allowed me to have. Aren't you glad?
the things that man can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now my overseer tells me that we don't have preachers like me anymore. You see, we're all sophisticated nowadays. <laughs> well, Lord, I don't care what they say. I'm going to obey the Spirit. I walk it, I talk it, I live it, I breathe it. This is who God has made me. Hallelujah. Brother Isaac calls me the legend of Illinois. Praise the Lord. I don't have any known Brother Isaac, but he's all over the church of God. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, God is wanting to do something in these last days that we're living in. He wants to lift us. He wants to strengthen us. He wants to bring the church back powerful uh, like we once were. Uh, do you realize we've lost a lot of power and authority out of the church uh, because we don't know how to pray uh, like we once did? Uh, hallelujah. We need to find us the owners uh, and close the door behind us uh, and stay on our knees uh, until we turn from heaven uh, and begin uh, to allow uh, the works of God to come back into uh, the church house. Amen. Amen. Well, glory. Now do y'all see what you got yourself into this morning? This is our home away from home. My wife and I, when we come down to see our son and daughter and all back there, I told Brother Atkinson, we just feel at home here. Hallelujah. You feel just like my church. Hey, by the way, they're going to be preaching in my church this morning too. My associate going to be taking care of the home church of God this morning. But I had a more pressing thing to do. That little fellow laying back there going to have a birthday on Wednesday. And I told him I was going to come down and have a birthday cake with him. And I found out now it's going to be a birthday cookie. <laughs> well, that's all right, isn't it? I think about the old time, Church of God. I think about Ray A. Shoes. As I've listened to a preacher in camp meeting year after year after year. I think about the history he had behind him. He got to Illinois and started the first church of God in El Dorado, Illinois, that was ever started in Illinois. He rode a mule in from El Dorado to Carmi and started one in Carmi. And then he would ride that mule back and forth between those two churches on Sunday. One would have Sunday morning service, and one would have Sunday night service, but he would ride that mule. Hallelujah. How many of us can do that today, Brother Atkinson? Praise the Lord. Whatever it takes to preach the gospel. That's what we need. Now I'm going to go to Ephesians, the second chapter. I'm not visiting now. I'm a strange person, huh? You don't believe it? Ask my wife. I tell everybody I'm about this much hungry and this much good, and my wife tells it to the way around. You don't believe her, don't you? Ephesians, the second chapter. Starting with verse number one. And it says, you have he quickened. Quickened means made alive. Are we alive today? Yes. And you have he, has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. I found myself one time dead in trespasses and sin. I went to the house of God on February 12th, 1969, and got into the service like I had never been in, in my life. A praise God day I was shouting all across. He's sleeping through my preacher. 
And I said he don't go to sleep on anybody's shoulders anymore. He likes Paul's shoulder. He's sleeping. Amen. Now you know I've got to throw a little bit in about that grandchild. Yes. But listen to me. God wants us to understand. Once we were made alive, He wants us to act like it. Amen. He wants us to be alive. He wants us to be able to share with the world. Now I'll tell you what, the more alive you become here in Cape Town Church of God, the more people are going to come to that door. Amen. The more souls are going to get saved. Hallelujah. How many of you ever seen anybody acting like me? A few of you have. Some of you are still staring at me. That's all right. I'm Holy Ghost filled from one end to the other. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what happened to me years ago. I was in the church house and we were having a great service. I was 17 years old uh, and they prophesied over my, uh, myself uh, and my wife back there that we would marry. I thought they don't know what they're talking about. I, I'm 17 years old. I, I'm not marrying anybody. Well, she's sitting back there, so guess what? Later on, I did marry her. But I believe in prophecy. I believe in the Word of God coming alive in our lives and in our hearts and within our soul. If God not living in us, then we're not saved. If we're not feeling the anointing of the Holy Ghost in us, why not? We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to make us what we need to be. And I hold on with it. Chapter the eighth verse. 
So that after that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have power. Uh, praise God in Jerusalem, uh, in Judea, uh, praise God in Samaria, and in the uttermost part uh, of the world. I uh, uh, praise God to witness. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's not just for the church. Uh, it's time for us to witness uh, and get out and call people in. Amen. Amen. I like that. Praise God. If I want to draw beads, I can take a little bit of honey and put it on a table. I can have that thing covered up with beads this time of the year. They'll come in there and just block that. If I want to have a powerful church, I, I, what we need to do I, is expose them I, I to the Holy Ghost I, and the power of God and make you a good taste of it. I don't ever want to know what it's like not to have the Holy Ghost.
consequence of the Lord. Young yeah. lady, you do a good job singing. But I didn't hear any back singers up here this morning. I wasn't up here. But listen to me, God loves us this morning. Hallelujah. Let me get my glasses on. This is another thing. I've got my scripture put up on the board at Honeycomb Church of God. They're this big. I mean, I, I don't even have to have my glasses on to read the scriptures when they're coming out. Do I stay with all of them? I never get finished with it. I've never got finished with a message in my life. Brother Ashton, you ever get finished with a message? I'll give them eight pages of scripture in a lot of times. I might get a page and a half of that done in an hour. That's it. Then I'll come back on Sunday night and pick up where I left off if the Lord allows me. But every now and then, He won't even allow me to do that. He'll lead me in a different direction. God is my witness. Uh, two Sundays uh, ago on Sunday morning, uh, I get to church at daylight on Sunday morning. Y'all want to go praise God. Uh, uh, when I get to church at daylight every Sunday morning, uh, I pray. Uh, I see God's face. Uh, I thought I had it all worked out in the missing. Uh, I was going to preach. Uh, and all of a sudden, I've learned to listen to God. How many of you argue with God? If you do, how well that feel? I mean, I don't argue with God. I went ahead and preached that message. Some of my people told me it was the most powerful message they'd ever heard me preach. But it was God's message. You see, brothers, they don't belong to us. This is God's message. I'm still going to get to Romans 8 1 here in a second or two. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are glory. Somebody shout glory. I'll say it. 
It's good to have a little humor along the way too. But I want you to listen to me today. God is in this place. Cambro Church of God is sitting in a situation, and I said this one last time, that you could grow until you can't hold the people in this facility. It'll be wall to wall. The anointing of God's here. You've got the preacher here. You've got the singers here. Praise God. All we need to do now is pray the a sinner singing it out and get out and come here and welcome them into the house of God. I don't know about you, but I like to talk to people out there on the street. It don't take long when I start talking to somebody and they find out that I'm a, a preacher. Praise God. I walk into the malls in Mary and Illinois. I walk in there and they be total strangers. I come up and sit down beside me and start telling me their life story. And my wife said, I've never seen anything like it. They didn't know me. They didn't know what I was. And fighting 
yourself and fight in the flesh. I want you to come pray. I want you to get this out of your life and out of your heart. Some of us need to do this. Some of us just need to understand God loves us enough. Just like the song. He's enough that they were saying. Praise God. If you're here, we'd like to do that. Now, I'm not, not, not a long offer called giver. Praise God. You'll find out very quickly I'll turn it back over to the pastor because I believe if somebody's got a need, they'll move. Amen? You've done a great job here. Give the Lord praise. Amen. 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 The word to us for you. He's concerned about you. So glad you're here this morning. And if you're listening, watching on Facebook, the Lord loves you too. Amen. 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 If you'd like to pray around the altar, we are welcome to Amen. come and pray. If you want to pray where you are, you can pray there as well. The Lord will hear you. Amen. Be sure to let Brother Carol know how much we love and appreciate him and his family. So glad they're here today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the privilege we have to be in the Lord's house for a Sunday morning. Thank you for the powerful word of God. We thank you, Lord, it's by the grace of God that you change hearts and lives, that you make a way when you seem to be the way because you are the way maker. We thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege, no matter who we are, no matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, we have the privilege to call upon the name of the Lord. And we thank you, God, for praying for people. We thank you for your grace to support us. And I thank you, God, that you hear us when we call upon you. Yeah.